Welcome everyone to the Better Love Movement podcast, where you will finally learn how to intentionally do dating and relationships right. My name is Anita Staudmeyer, and I'm a licensed professional therapist and your personal love mentor. I've worked with thousands of singles and couples, giving them the skills needed to attract and keep the amazing love they desire. It's my heart's work to help people to get the skills needed to not only become the very best versions of themselves, but to help them grow and evolve emotionally and relationally. You can absolutely have the romantic relationship of your dreams. Come and let me show you how. Hello, everyone, and this is Anita back again this week with another podcast episode. So last week I took off because the week before I was on vacation in Martha's Vineyard for about seven days, and I was able to record that week's podcast episode while I was there because I was relaxed, I was feeling great, and really didn't have a whole lot else to do other than enjoy the scenery. And so once I got back, I, of course, was swamped, swamped with work. And we did not have a podcast episode last week. And I apologize for that. But I am back this week, back on schedule, back on track with episode number 90. I cannot believe this is the 90th podcast episode that I have recorded But this is episode number 90, and it is called Breakup Recovery, The Three Stages You Must Go Through. So last week, when I did not have a podcast episode load, I actually was the guest on another podcast um, called the Learn to Love Podcast with Zach Beach, and we discussed all about breakup recovery, breakup survival skills. We talked about this and I decided I was going to go into a little deeper dive on these three stages on the Better Love Movement podcast. So I have a couple of clients who are going through breakups right now and I am walking them through these three stages. But it's really important if you have been through a breakup, I would say... Any time between a day or really the last six months, I really want you to pay attention to this episode. This is your episode because here's one thing I know for sure. You are going to get back out there and you're going to date again. You're going to love again. But here's what I don't want to happen. I don't want you to fall into the same patterns over and over again. I don't want you to break your own heart over and over again because you're not going through these three stages that you need to go through. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't do this work. A lot of people wind up in and out of relationships, in and out of marriages, because they don't go through these three stages. So we're going to deep dive into these three stages. And I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about each one that than I did on the Learn to Love podcast. I'm also going to put a link to that podcast episode down below in the show notes of this show. And I'm also going to give you a really wonderful tool that I hope will be helpful with uh, the stage two of this process. But we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, So here's some statistical facts I want to give you because you all know I love facts. I love statistics and numbers. So for folks out there who have been married. I have been married. And so right now, you know, in our country, we're at about a 49.8% um, failure rate for first marriages, about 50%, almost 50%. So almost half of marriages will not make it first marriages. But here's the thing. As people go on to second marriages, third marriages, those percentages go up. So second marriages, we're looking at 60% of second marriages will fail. And then third marriages, 73% of third marriages will fail. And the truth of the matter is this. People are not 
doing the work. They're not going through the three stages that they must go through so that they are in a better emotional state, mental state. They're just in a better place. So if they want to marry again, if they want to love again, that their, their outcomes will be better. But people are not doing this work. And so I'm going to give you the blueprint and I'm going to give you a tool that I think will help you if you're willing to really, you know, sit down and do this work. It's really, really important that you do this work. I think you're going to have a better outcome if you do. OK, um, another statistic that I was looking at was that the average first marriage lasts about eight years. And I'm like, wow. And I've heard of this thing like the seven year itch where that's supposedly a period of time where marriages get really stressed or people start, you know, I don't know, doing stuff, flipping out. Um, so yeah, eight years. And then I got on a website where they were talking about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic divorce statistics and that they are waiting until like June of next year, June of 2021, to really see how this COVID-19 pandemic has affected the divorce rate. They're saying they're gonna, that we're going to see a significant increase in divorces this year. Um, we already have seen a significant increase in domestic violence, but they're thinking that this year we're in now will be the largest single year of increase in divorce in decades. So I'm really curious about that. I can't wait for that. Um, those statistics to come out next year because, yeah, let me tell you, in my practice alone, I've had several couples that have not made it. They have separated or they have filed for divorce. And here's one thing I know for sure that this pandemic has definitely revealed people's authentic self, like who they really are. So if you really didn't know who your partner was or you didn't even know who you were, this pandemic has really, you know, kind of revealed people's true authentic selves. Like if you did not like this person, um, now you can't hide it. Like you can't hide the fact that you don't like your partner, that you don't agree with a lot of things. You all are not compatible. That's what I think the pandemic has done. It has really shed a light, kind of shined a light on, um, I don't like this person. Or we're not compatible. You know, we don't want the same things. Um, we're annoyed by each other. And yeah, like that's a thing. But see, a lot of people get married and they use everything outside of them as a distraction or outside of the relationship as a distraction. And it keeps the relationship going. But when there is none of that, when there's only you and that person and you're looking at each other day after day after day, yeah, I hope you like what you see, because if you don't, you're probably going to run away from it. So I'm really, really curious to see what happens um, with the divorce statistic from this year. This is going to be really, really interesting. And I love, you know, all things like this about statistics and things of that nature. So let's jump right into this three-step process, this, these three stages that everyone needs to go through when they're recovering from a breakup, when they're trying to heal and grow and get better. But most importantly, if they're going to love again, if they're going to marry or get into another relationship and actually have a better outcome, like have a better chance of that relationship being a better fit, um, being happy and healthy and long lasting. It's really important that you go through these three stages, go through these three steps. OK, so number one, what's the first step you have to go through? You have to grieve and mourn the loss of two things, the person and the relationship. So that's two things that you now have to grieve and mourn the loss of. So the breakup happens, no matter if it's you that breaks up with someone or someone breaks up with you, you have to grieve. You have to walk through the pain of this person 
is gone or we're no longer together. I'm, I'm not with this person every day or seeing or talking to this person every day. And add to that, this relationship that we had. So whether it was a month or a year or 20 years, this relationship is no more. So what we once knew of as you and I is no more. So we have to mourn and grieve that. We have to mourn and grieve for the person that we love or cared about, but we also have to mourn and grieve the relationship that is now no longer. The relationship seeks to exist between myself and my partner. And so this is sometimes the hardest part because it's going to hurt. This is the painful part. This is the part that doesn't feel good. And a lot of people become overwhelmed in this part. They're not sure like what to do with all of their feelings and thoughts and emotions and anxieties and just everything that's coming up for them. But you must go through it. You must walk through it. You cannot go around it, over it, under it. You must go through it. Now, here's what I will tell you. How you go through it, as far as whether you go through it slowly or you go through it quickly, you know, it really is up to you. Like some people crawl through it, right? Their their pain is there and they crawl through the pain. They drag it out. It can take weeks and months and they just crawl through this grieving and mourning and like everything makes them nostalgic and remember the person or the relationship and they're crying. And that could take days, weeks, or months. That's crawling through it. And then other people are going to get up and they're going to walk through it. And then other people are going to run through it. So it really is up to you how long this stage in the process lasts. Everybody is different. I myself am more of a cathartic type person. I like to like just, you know, just run through it head first. I, I bring on the emotions. I will play all of the love songs. I will cry. I will sit in the closet. I will light candles. And, you know, I will just cry until my eyes are dry, you know, and I will really like get into the crying. I will like make lots of noise and, and crying. So, you know, I will like really get overblown with it. Because I want to feel it. You know, I want to feel all of it. I want to just dive into it. And then when I have no more tears or when listening to these songs or looking at these movies don't make me want to cry anymore, I'm like, okay, all right. I think I've, you know, I think I'm good. You know, I like that whole cathartic approach to, yeah, I want to feel it all. I want to, you know, as I tell people, it's like, you know, breaking up with someone that you love, but yet, you know, isn't good for you. It's kind of like cutting off your your left arm. You know, you got to do it, but, you know, it's going to hurt, you know. So I just, I cut it off. I tourniquet it and I just feel that pain, pain, pain until that scab forms, until, you know, it's starting to heal. I just feel that pain. So I just dive in, I get it over with, and then I can move on to step two. So step two in this process is it's now time to assess. You have literally got to sit down probably on more than one occasion and you are going to use my tool that I am going to attach in the show notes called the relationship autopsy. Okay, you are going to answer the questions in the relationship autopsy. Because you now need information. You need to understand what happened, why it happened. You need to understand the part that you played in this outcome that you got. And dare I say it, ladies, gentlemen, even if you were cheated on, I hear this all the time. Well, I was cheated on, Anita. This person cheated on me. What do you mean? What part did I play? It does not matter. Let's say most of the blame was them. Let's say 97% of the blame was them. There is still 3% that you have got to own. And it's probably more than 3%, but let's, let's be honest. You played a part in this. And so you've got to know what that is. Because if you don't own it, if you don't recognize it and write it down and own it, 
you're going to go into the next situation completely oblivious again. You're going to play out that part again. And yes, that person will be new and different, but you won't be. And there is a good chance that that relationship won't make it either. And then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. So uh, a man that I had worked with who had been married four times, that I that was a client of mine. And he said, yeah, I don't know what's, you know, I, I just, I have horrible luck with women or I just... You know, I have horrible time picking good women. I just don't pick good women well. And I said to him, sir, you know, I hate to tell you this, but it's you. There is something that you're doing over and over and over. There's a way that you're showing up because you're the only common factor in these four marriages. You got married to four different women and you're the common denominator, You've got to stop and recognize what are you doing? What is the part that you're playing here? And dare I say it, it is more than just you don't know how to pick a wife. There's something else going on with you. And you've got to be willing to look at that. You've got to be willing to look at that mirror that's being put up in front of you. But there is something there. So this Relationship Autopsy Tool will help you do just that. There are some questions on there. I want you to answer all of those questions. You can even, if you want to get really clever, you can take this Relationship Autopsy Tool and you can fill it out for three or four or five different relationships or different men that you've dated or women that you've dated. Like compare and contrast. That's going to help you even more. So that you can see, wow, there's some patterns here. There's some things here that are happening over and over and over in the relationships that I'm in. So that's going to be in the show notes. I want you to click on that link, get that um, relationship autopsy tool, print it out and fill it out. Because this is a part of stage two, where you are going to assess from start to finish this relationship that you are in. You are going to answer those questions. You're going to deep dive. You're going to own your part in it. And you're going to really learn the lessons that you need to learn so that you're not taking this same test over and over and over. But there are lessons in every relationship, every marriage, every situation that we're in, every romantic situation. We have to be willing to sit down and learn what they are and then assess them, see our part. Wow, okay, now I see that I, you know, have very weak boundaries or I do too much for the men in my life. I I go in doing too much and, you know, you can really see. And I had to sit down and do this recently and so many things became clear to me. So many things. So now I can look at that over and over. I can use that almost as a guide, a a guidebook moving forward that, okay, this is something that I noticed that happens in the last three or four relationships kind of over and over again. This is something I'm not going to do moving forward. I want to get different results, so I'm going to do something different. But that owning your part, that's the big part And I tell my ladies, ladies, when you're out on a date with a man, date number one, two, three, four, at some point, you are going to talk about either the last relationship they were in, maybe your last relationship. Now, up, you know, up until the fourth or fifth date, I don't want you to talk about your ex. I want you to say, oh, that's a long, boring story. The good news is it's over or I'm here with you now. But at some point, he's going to talk about the last relationship or the last marriage. And what you're looking for is you want him to own his part. You want to hear, you don't just want to hear what she did or didn't do or how awful she was. Well, you know, so what do you think, you know, you could have done differently? What do you, what, what responsibility do you share in your relationship, you know, not making it? Like, that's the question you want to ask. And if he can't tell you, or if he goes again directly into what she did or didn't do, or this is a yellow flag, ladies, if he says, 
well, I just don't pick the right women. No, that no, that doesn't fly. You're still not owning your part. That is a backhand way of putting it on the other person. What was your part in this? What did you do or not do in this relationship that contributed to it turning out the way it did? They have to own their part. I even own my part. I was married to a raging narcissist and he was unfaithful in the marriage and I still had a part to play. I still had a part to play. I had a very critical spirit. Um, I turned away once my daughter was born and started putting more time and attention into my daughter. Um, I did not respect the person I was married to. I did not have any business marrying him because I really was disrespectful and did not respect him. I played a part in it. And so I have to look at that. I have to unpack that. I have to own that. And then moving forward, I have to say, okay, I've got to make some changes in these areas. These are some things that I need to work on so I can get a different result. Okay, so number two, assessing. And again, how long will that take? It really depends on the person or how long the relationship was or what happened in the relationship. But again, I don't want you to rush through any of these steps. Take your time. Do the work, okay? This is really, really important. But this assessing, this is going to require pencil, paper, pen and paper, sitting down, writing down, journaling, if you want to type it in a computer, however. But this is literally going to require like you're taking a course. You need to do this work. You need to sit down fill out this um, relationship autopsy tool, go over it, maybe do it again for another relationship prior to the last relationship, compare and contrast. You really need to see in black and white what happened, what this person did or didn't do, what you did or didn't do, what your part in it was to really get clear because there are lessons in every situation, so many lessons. And I want you to learn those lessons so you're not repeating them over and over and over. Okay? The third and final stage is the healing stage. And I believe this stage probably takes the longest. A lot of people grieve and mourn. And, you know, at some point, I'd say anywhere between weeks to months, you know, they're kind of like, okay, you know, sometimes I miss the person, but overall, I'm able to live my life and go out and do things and have fun. You know, that it usually doesn't take years. Um, It usually takes anywhere between days to weeks to months. Um, The second stage, the assessing stage, if you do this the way it needs to be done, this actually doesn't have to take as long at all. Maybe a few weeks You can sit down and and take time here and there to do that assessing stage and really learning those lessons. But the third stage is the stage that will take the longest. And this is the healing stage. Because what do I say? Time plus work equals healing. Okay, so it is not just time passing because lots of people just, okay, I haven't been in the relationship for a year. But if you're not doing any work, if you're not doing anything, you know, I mean, there isn't a whole lot of healing happening. There isn't anything really happening. Sure. I mean, the hurt grows further and further out because time has passed, but it's the time plus the work. That is what's going to give you your healing. That is what's going to help you feel better, do better, learn those lessons, be ready to love again. Um, be, be ready to trust again, be, be optimistic towards love. See, that's when you know that healing is coming upon you. You are not bitter. You are not angry. You are not distrustful. Um, you are not, um, kind of in this state where, eh, you know, I can take it or leave it. Uh, when you start to realize, wow, I'm really, starting to desire the romantic company of someone. I'm really starting to get kind of curious about dating again or, you know, meeting people again. That's when you know the healing, 
the healing is, you know, it's, it's getting there. You're getting to a good, healthy place. Like, man, you know, I would really like to, you know, date someone or, or be rom- romantically interested in someone. That's when you kind of know, okay, we're getting to that point again where I'm ready to get out and try again. Um, but some ladies that I work with, they're in a very ambivalent state. Like they're in a take it or leave it, eh, you know, oh, the thought of dating, the thought of getting dressed up, the thought of texting, the thought of talking to someone, FaceTiming someone. And you know what I tell them? You're not ready. You're not ready. You should not be engaging men when you're in that feeling state. You should not because you're just, you're not ready. And that's okay. That is totally okay. You are in that healing phase. So time has to pass. Work has to be done. What kind of work, you ask? Well, I want you to read a few books, listen to them on Audible. I want you to look at some YouTube videos. I want you to seek out a therapist, seek out a coach or a mentor, okay? Check out, you know, our coaching program. I would love to work with you. All these things are going to be happening in your healing phase. But then also, just time is passing. Time is passing. You're focused on yourself. You're focused on the things that are important to you in your life. You are not dating. You are not on dating apps. You are not being hooked up by friends. You are not going out on blind dates. You're not doing any of that. What you are allowed to do in this phase is engage with men. You're perfectly okay to engage with men. What do I mean by that? You are perfectly allowed to flirt. You are perfectly allowed to smile or let men hold the door open for you if they pay for your coffee, if they tell you you're beautiful. Um, If you have these random men who message you or DM you through Instagram, sure, you're allowed to message back. You're allowed to flirt. You're allowed to, you know, You're allowed to do all of that, but you will not go on a date. So if a man says, hey, we should go out or I'd love to take you out to dinner, your answer during this healing time is, oh, thank you so much. That sounds wonderful. However, I am in a stage right now where I'm just healing from a breakup. And you don't have to get specific as to when it happened or what happened. No, I don't want you to tell him any of that. You're going to say, I've gone through a breakup recently and I'm kind of in a healing phase from that. So I am still kind of in that phase where, you know, I am just letting time pass. I'm doing some work and I'm just not quite ready yet. If anything, your response, that being your response, will probably pique a man's interest even more because you have put up a barrier there. There is this barrier between you and he going out on a date and it's called my healing. It's called, you know, recovering from a breakup. And so, okay, he's probably going to try even harder And you are going to just say, yeah, I'm just not ready yet. And, you know, you're great. And thank you for the compliment. Thank you for the coffee or whatever banter you all have shared. But you will not go out. You will not date. You will wait until you have gotten further along in your healing process. Okay. And you'll know. You'll know when you're ready. You know, you will know when you're ready. And there's a there's a uh, post going around that says, you know, you don't want to date and re-engage people again out of loneliness. You know, you don't want to do it because you're lonely or you're bored. Like you have to do it for the right reasons. If you do it for the wrong reasons, trust me, you are going to get in trouble every time. And I see that happen. Men and women both. They get lonely. They get desperate. They get bored. And they just start, you know, dating random people, people who are not good for them, people that they settle for, people that they would never under any other circumstances date, but now they're dating this person or sleeping with this person. Don't be that person, okay? Don't be that person. I want you to have what you're worthy of. I want you to have the man that you want, And a lot of times when we start dating and we're not quite healed, we're not fully over our breakup, that's what we do. We settle. 
we settle, we take whatever comes and, and that's only going to lead to more problems. And that's what I don't want for you down the road. So this healing phase, it varies. I've seen people do it in a matter of three months. I've seen people do it six months, a year. It really depends on the person. And you'll know when you're ready. If you need help with this, please consider working with me as a coach. It's something that I can help you to kind of define um, or work with a therapist, you know, just to make sure you're in a good, healthy state. But during this state, you're focused on you. You're focused on learning. You're focused on growing. You're focused on getting new knowledge and understanding that knowledge so that you can apply that knowledge. That's what's so important about this. But these three stages, you have to go through these three stages before you are truly ready to have a healthy love and a healthy relationship again. So if you're married and you have decided, you know, I'm separated from my husband, um, we are separated and we are living separate and apart. And if you don't have children in the state of Virginia, it's six months. And if you have children, it's a year. I'm going to be frank with you. You should not be dating until you're legally divorced. Those time limits are put in there for a reason. Okay, they knew what they were doing when they put those time uh, limits in there and you should abide by them. Too many times I see people separated off into new relationships, dating new people, engaging new people. They're not ready. They're not ready. If that's the honest to God truth, you're not ready. You are lonely. You are bored. You are seeking validation. You want to feel good again at any cost. And the chances are high that whoever it is that you're engaging with, you're settling. That's probably not even the person you really want to be with, but you're with that person. So that's what I don't want to happen. I don't want you to get into a situation that is only going to end again, like the relationship you just got out of. It is going to end again also. I want you to have... Um, tools and skills and a firm foundation moving forward and going into the next relationship that you're in or the next marriage that you're in. So it's really important that you take the time necessary. But I see too many people jump right from a marriage or a relationship, a long-term relationship. Three months later, they are in another relationship and they're not ready They are not ready. They're going to hurt themselves and they're going to hurt the person that they're in relationship with. Trust and believe. Ladies, if you are single and you're listening to this, do not engage a man who is separated. Do not. I mean, I want to believe that this is common sense, but maybe it isn't. If a man is not legally divorced, don't engage with him, period. And don't listen to, oh, yeah, I mean, our marriage ended like five years ago and I'm just getting separated. I just feel like, you know, I, 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 I did that whole grieving the relationship for five years. You're still legally married. OK, and until you have that divorce decree signed and you've done these three stages. Yeah. You know, call me. Call me when you're ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. And I'm not going to put myself in that situation only for me to get hurt. So don't do it. Don't do it. The state knows what it's doing. That's why it says six months if you have no children, because anything could happen in six months, a year if you have children. That Those are good markers. And yes, dare I say it, a person should not be dating other people until they're divorced, even if it's a year. Even if it's a year, a year is not that long. You need to focus on yourself. You need to focus on your children. You need to focus on your life and what that's going to look like when your marriage is done. You got a lot of things to do and it's going to take about a year to figure all that out. But what you want to do is you want to add another person to that mix that is only going to cloud your judgment and distract you from the things you have to do. Don't do that. Just take the time you need so that you can move forward 
and not hurt yourself and not hurt someone else. Okay, so those are the three stages that you must go through, especially if you want to land in a happy, healthy, long term relationship. You want to make sure that you're going through these stages and you're really processing all of this There's a lot of information. And then when the healing happens and here's the thing. I'm not saying you're going to be 100% healed because there are going to be triggers and things that are going to come back to you. So I'm not saying that there is not going to, you know, there's not going to be a part of you that still may have a flashback or still may have um, thoughts or feelings about the ex, you know, no, none of us are perfectly healed. We all bear some scars of love and relationships and marriages that we've been in. But I want you to be further along the path. I don't want you to be just getting on the path and then trying to get into another relationship. Okay? So that is why I'm telling you, take your time, do this work, work on healing. Um, Tony Gaskins once said that you should be able to love again as if you've never been hurt. And so you want to get as close to that as you can. You should not be going into new relationships with quote unquote trust issues. Oh, I have trust issues. Okay, then you have more work to do because again, you're not ready. Or if you, um, you know, I don't trust the other people. I don't trust myself. Um, I still have anger. I still have bitterness. You know, if you have any of this stuff going on, if you're still projecting, you know, if you have any of this going on, you're overly sensitive about certain things, certain subjects, then you're not ready. And that's okay. You're not ready. You need a little more time to get further down that healing path. But time plus work equals healing. That's what it's going to take. So go ahead and get started. All right. If you need help, If you need assistance, this is what I'm here for. It's what I do all day, every day, is assist people in having the relationship that they really want, having the love that they deserve. So please reach out to me on the website, www.betterlovemovement.com, and see how we can work together. Um, Continue to listen to the podcast and get a lot of free content and information there, or check me out on Instagram or Facebook. But yes, for all of my folks who've been through a breakup or a separation or a recent divorce, these three stages, you've got to go through all of them before you consider being in a new relationship again. All right. I I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, stay open to love. Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. If you are enjoying this podcast, please leave me a five-star rating and review. Your ratings and reviews help me to continue to bring you more great content. Head on over to YouTube and check out the Better Love Movement channel. There's more video content there and you can subscribe to be notified when a new video is posted. If you have a question that you would like to have answered on the podcast or in a YouTube video, please send it to me at info at betterlovemovement.com. You can also connect with me directly on the Magnify app to have your dating and relationship questions answered. That's M-A-G-N-I-F-I, and it's available on iOS and Android. You get your first five minutes for free. So give me a call and let's chat.